Now he spent 41 years in uniform. He spent the last eight years in the private sector, at least up until he got the call from President Biden to join his administration. Now, I was a history guy on this campus. I don't know much about math, but I think if you add 41 to those eight, you get 49. And for 48 of those 49 years, he has been married to his great wife, Charlene, who I got to meet in person before I met him. Although I had been introduced to him via the telephone by President Biden. And when I let, met Charlene, I knew I wanted to meet Lloyd, and he has not disappointed me one bit. General Austin is the first African-American general to lead an Army Corps in combat and the first African-American to command an entire theater of war. I can go into a lot of firsts for him, but there is a certain rhythm to history. I learned my uh, love for history here on this campus. I study it every day. And I have found that rhythm. And there's a rhythm to General Austin's history. General Austin, as I said, was the first African American to serve, or is the first to serve, as Secretary of Defense. However, he grew up in Thomasville, Georgia. And the rhythm to this is that the first African American to graduate from West Point back in 1877 was from Thomasville, Georgia. So he has a rhythm with him. He may not show it when he walk, or when he talk, or even when he attempts to dance, but he has a rhythm. And I have enjoyed getting to be associated with that rhythm. And I am pleased, honored, to be able to present to you today our 2024 Spring Commencement Speaker, General Lloyd Austin III. Well, good morning, Bulldogs. I know it's raining, but I don't think there's anybody out there. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning, Bulldogs. Good morning. Right. That's right. It's more like it. You know, it's great to be here at South Carolina State, and I'm not just saying that because my sister-in-law is a graduate of SC State. <laughs> this truly is a good-looking crowd. Now. I know that I'm standing between you and your diplomas and some other things. And as uh, Congressman Clyburn said, I am a former general, so I know when I'm outnumbered. So I'm going to try to keep this pretty brief because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, I believe that a good commencement speaker should be tall, but a good commencement speech should be short. Uh, Congressman Clyburn, uh, Clyburn, thank you for that generous introduction. It's an honor to be here with you. You've been a personal inspiration and a true friend. And sir, you are a paragon of leadership. You've always fought to make America's promise real for every citizen. And that's why, just last week, President Biden awarded you America's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal, Medal of Freedom. Let's give him a round of applause. And, 
And sir, you met your late wife, Miss Emily, right here in Orangeburg. And you both gave so much to this university. Today, the Dr. Emer Emily England Clyburn Hon Honors College carries on in her legacy. And the James E. Clyburn University Transportation Center will prepare students for great careers that will keep America moving forward. So, Congressman, thanks for everything that you and Ms. Emily have done for SC State and for our democracy. No. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car. At President Conyers, thanks for leading your alma mater so well. And thanks for the, all that you've given to the Department of Defense, including your 28 years of service in the United States Army. If we can't reduce your tax debt, trustees, distinguished faculty, distinguished faculty, dedicated staff, thanks for doing so much for South Carolina State. And I know you've already paid a special tribute to your parents, but I want you to give them another round of applause. And I know that everyone knows that tomorrow is Mother's Day, right? Sunday is Mother's Day. I'm living in the future, guys. <laughs> Sunday is Mother's Day, so don't forget, and let's give our mothers and grandmas a round of applause. And that brings me to you, the class of 2024. 2024, let's make some noise. So graduates, we're here to celebrate you and your achievements. Your class had an especially challenging road to graduation day. In 2020, as a, a pandemic erupted, your, cl your freshman class was less than half the normal size. It was unprecedented and it was hard. But you dug deep, and you stuck by each other, and you made it to today. Now many of you, are the first in your family to graduate from college. That is a phenomenal achievement. And many of you have balanced school with work, with raising a family, and with giving back to this community. You can call it grit, you can call it hustle, but around here we call it bulldog tenacity. And so, class of 2024, you have worked incredibly hard to get here. And we are all very proud of you. And you should be proud of yourselves. Now, i got to give a special shout out to the South Carolina State Army ROTC program, the legendary Bulldog Battalion. Yeah. Over more than 75 years, this ROTC program has produced more than 2,000 U.S. military officers. In 1972, South Carolina State became one of the first HBCUs to enroll female Army ROTC cadets. And all six of those women became colonels. Believe it or not, this university has launched the careers of more than 20 generals and admirals. And we may have some future generals in the crowd with us today, so let's congratulate the newest second lieutenants in the, in the U.S. Army. So as, as I said, I'm going to keep it brief, so I want to just share three things with you today, and then I'll let you get back to celebrating. First, as the old guy, I'll explain what I've learned about the power of education. Second, I'll say a word about the importance of giving back. And finally, I'll leave you with what Congressman Clyburn has called a message of expectations. So number one, education gives you the power to make change, even when it's hard, and to help America live up to its full promise. 
You know, I've lived that. I grew up in Georgia in the time of Jim Crow. And our local public high school had long been whites only. And so when I was a teenager, I became one of the first black students to integrate it. Those were hard days, painful days, ugly days. But you know, I am still moved by the memory of every person who fought to make sure that I could get a good public education. The teachers, <coughs> the officials, and the neighbors. And I still remember their determination and their decency. And I still carry forward their lesson, which is that living up to this country's founding values means bringing everyone along and leaving no one out and drawing on the full talents of all the American people. And I am honored to stand here today with you as America's first black Secretary of Defense. Now, I doubt that the people that were trying to keep me out of that school imagine that they were blocking the education of a future four-star general and a cabinet official. But you never know which kid is going to, be, going to grow up to be Bob Johnson or Oprah or Chadwick Boseman or Stacey Adams or Barack Obama or Kamala Harris. You never know what we lose when we leave someone out. And so we don't have one American to spare. We don't have one citizen to squander. And that means that we need to keep working together to knock down barriers and to level the playing field and to let everybody compete to win. And you know, I saw that in action at West Point. As a cadet, I was thrown, uh, thrown in with people from all walks of life. I was a southern kid far away from home, but my teachers taught me more than just mathematics and military strategy. They believed in us. <clears throat> and I was lucky to have educators, including some very special black mentors who showed us all how to become a team and how to turn our differences into strength and how to turn hard work into results. And they showed us that leadership isn't just what you do, it's about who you are. So here's my second message. Your education at South Carolina State has already changed your lives. And it will keep making possible a number of new things. It has already shaped your character and equipped you to excel, and that won't stop. For nearly 130 years, South Carolina State has produced the skilled leaders that our country needs in agriculture, education, engineering, and so much more. You know, South Carolina State trains more black nuclear engineers than any school in the country. And the National Security Agency has designated South Carolina State as a, a center of academic excellence in cyber defense. This university educates its graduates for jobs of the future, and it has prepared you for the challenges ahead. And I know you've heard President Conyers say that you can get there from here. And that has always been the story of America's HBCUs. Generation after generation, they teach excellence, and they kick open the doors of opportunity. As President Biden has noted, HBCUs help produce 40% of America's black engineers and 50% of black lawyers and 70% of doctors and dentists and 80% of judges. And I can't put it better, any better than Army Major General Retired Abe Turner, 
a member of the class of 1976 who I proudly served with in the military. HBCUs, he says, provide an opportunity to do goodness and to prosper and to provide a service to the nation that otherwise might have been missed by larger universities. So class of 2024, we need your service <coughs> to the nation. So find ways to make change, to contribute, and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. As you heard Congressman Clyburn say, I had a brief 41-year career in the, in the U.S. Army. And we definitely need some of you to stand up and salute and defend the United States in uniform. But we also need all of you to give back in, in your own ways. And you can do that as a teacher, as a doctor, as a firefighter, or by joining the PTA, or by building a great business in your community, or by serving as an usher in your church, or by leading a Girl Scout troop, by running for city council, or by registering people to vote. You'll find your own path. But in times like these, civic engagement is not optional. And that brings me to my third and final message for you. It's what Congressman Clyburn calls a message of expectations. You know, the congressman also grew up in the segregated South. And he always had big dreams. But one day, a well-meaning neighbor warned young James to keep his high ambitions to himself. So his mother called him to the kitchen table. And she looked him in the eye and she told him, don't pay any attention to what that lady said. His mother said that she and his father expected and insisted that James and his brothers would push themselves to achieve more than their parents. That was her message of expectations. In class of 2024, that message is yours as well. It won't always be easy, but we need you out there. So you've got to put in the work to keep doing the reps and sets. You know, my friend and mentor, the late Colin Powell, addressed the graduates of South Carolina State back in 2011. And he said, no matter what your past is, no one owes you a thing. You have to perform to get ahead. But you know what? You've already proven that you're going to perform. Class of 2024, you were tested. And you overcame. And you made it to today. So you've shown, in the words of your school song, that you are ready all to do and dare. And that's the spirit of SC State. Now, you're graduating in challenging times, divided times. But so many things still bring us together as Americans. Our Constitution, our democracy, the rule of law, the new Beyonce album. <laughs> still with me out there, I got you. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't get to choose our times, but we do get to shape our times. And in a democracy, that's especially relevant, and it's, especially, it's a special responsibility for every citizen and for every member of this graduating class. You know, in May of 1964, the, the great playwright Lorraine Hansberry, the author of A Raisin in the Sun, spoke to a group of talented young black Americans, and she said, the nation needs your gifts. And so class of 2024, the nation needs your gifts. The nation needs your resilience. And the nation needs your service. So congratulations, class of 2024. Let's hear it for Bulldog Nation. May God bless you. May God bless our troops. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.